Hi, this is Sergeant Beast Larson coming today with video number seven in the series of Improving Officer Civilian Survival. Video number seven is Distraction Techniques. I'm going to recap just briefly. Number one, until a threat stops. Number two, shot avoidance. Remember, as we're talking through these video series, if I say the word gun and drop to the ground, that means I'm simulating somebody's presented a gun. I need to drop and be out of the line of fire and get to cover. Drop and get to cover. You have to be ready to do that at any time. I skipped down and did the seven danger zones of a traffic stop, video number three, because several officers were killed and attacked over the Christmas and New Year's time period. Went back up, number four, transfer of energy, the focus of energy, and then balance displacement. Now, all these videos are going to come together. They're going to all make sense. As, as I present and I refer back and forth and back and forth on this poster, you know, it's an overlaying message. You know, this and this and this put together means something. We're going to get into the arm bars and, and some takedowns and something hip toss later. And you'll see how the focus of energy becomes important. When you grab their wrist, you're focusing your energy with this. And this, remember, on an arm bar. And as you do that, your balance has to be superior, better than theirs. Distraction techniques come into play as you're grabbing and their wrist and arm going into this arm bar. You should have already distracted them in some kind of way. And I'm going to explain some of these things right now. And I'll tell you a video that I just watched uh, 10 minutes ago before starting this. And this happened to us down at the prison. It's happened to us in law enforcement, and it's a very common thing. When you go to arrest somebody, the video specifically today was a correction officer, over 10 years experience, went to serve. All the inmates were locked in the cells. So he's walking down up the stairs and down the hallway. He's walking with trays. He's going to go and set them right by the door, on the ground right by the door. And he walks up, a door bursts open, and an inmate comes in a taxi while he's got his hands full. Now, number one, he was assuming that all the doors would be secured, nobody would come out. Hands full of trays, that's a mistake. Never assume, don't carry too much. Never assume that door is secure because the inmates can manipulate locks all day long. Assume somebody's about to come out, have a plan in action. And the first part of your plan is how do you distract them while being balanced. Keep your balance. You've got trays. If I'm walking through with trays and I've done this in the chow hall and, and an inmate comes and does the wrong thing and they've got the tray, something's in my hand, I'm not going to run backwards with the tray. I'm not retreating and holding because now I'm holding. See my position? Walking backwards like this, I'm off balance. I'm the one that's going to become a victim. Like this officer was, was punched several times in the head and neck, carried out on a stretcher. This is, what, this is what we did. This is what we recommend. We, meaning all of us that's done this several times and have been through these kind of attacks. Somebody pops out, they come around, your hands are full. Whatever's in your hand needs to go into them. A food, food tray, just like this, it's going in their face and in their chest. Why? Because as I'm walking with this, I have balance. They don't, they're coming at me. Criminals, when they get ready to attack you, whether, whether you're in uniform or you're a civilian, they have this plan. They've thought about this in a car, in the hotel, all day long, whatever. I'm, they're going to come out with this. They're going to have a money bag. They're going to do whatever. Their hands will be full. They'll have a purse. They'll have kids. I'm going to run right up, grab them in the head, hit them, and drag them. But they, whatever they're doing, this is in their head. I'm going to run and grab and drag. They know exactly what they're going to do. So you have to throw them off of their game. Distraction techniques is how you do that. They do not expect when they come around and present a threat to me for me to step forward and shove my tray in their face. Now, you can distract people physically, mentally, and emotionally like we talked about up here. If you shove a tray and all of a sudden they have potatoes and green beans and some kind of weird-looking meat in a prison or whatever's in your hand, a purse, a box, a bag, your McDonald's drink, you shove that up in their face, they can't see. 
You get food and, and drink in their eyes, they're trying to attack you. You don't worry about that. You're not going to be legally in trouble for throwing a drink in an attacker's face. Distract him. Take away his vision. Take away his breathing. That's distraction. Moving is distraction. I had this conversation with a man yesterday at work. Somebody coming to attack. He's not going to expect you to be moving and going like this. But I'm taking small steps like this. He's not expecting that. They expect to come up and you to be afraid of them because they think they're the big bad criminal. Oh, they see me. They're going to be in fear and just freeze in fear and panic. No, do not panic. Do not freeze. You've heard of fight or flight. You, you're, the fight. you're the fight mode. I'm the fight mode. You're going to be the fight mode. That's why you're watching and doing this. Fight or flight. I should write that down here. Fight or flight. Circle fight. Really big. But I need a space for something else. I'll get another poster and we'll do that. This is how you fight. Distract them. If you've got something in your hands, maybe put your arms down. Maybe if you jump and take a fighting stance to somebody. They're coming up yelling and screaming at you. And all of a sudden you're in a fighting stance. They're going to stop. Their game plan just now changed. They're going to, uh-oh, what are they doing? Who am I messing with? Does this person know how to fight? Is this person going to beat me up? The bad guy, the attacker? Distract them with that. Don't, don't go all karate kid and put your arms up like this. Try to pray in mantis and your leg up. Because they may know something and they'll put you on the floor. That's, that's a very unbalanced position unless you're a master of it. So be careful what you're faking bluff. You know, this isn't a Texas Hold'em game. But if you get in a stance like this, you're watching these videos and you're listening to me and you're mentally preparing. If you're in a position like this, you can focus some energy. This is your energy right here, this big fist. You're going to focus it, pow, and hit them and get them away from you. And striking techniques are coming up. Coming up soon. Stunning techniques will be next. Striking techniques, how to improve your hand speed. We're going to talk and go through those. Distracting techniques. They come up there and you start yelling and screaming. Remember in here, I, in video six, I told you the 10-year-old boy started sting, singing gospel music. And he sang about God so much the kidnapper let him go. That will forever stay in my mind as number one distracting technique in my whole history. 34 years of carrying a gun and badge. That little boy, what he did, that miracle, is number one in my book. Number one, he distracted him by singing about God. It doesn't get any better than that. Transfer your energy, focus of energy, gun. Remember I said the gun word? I dropped to the ground. Now when you're a police and you're out of house and you've got back up there or three or four of you and you're serving a warrant, and you're, you're at the front door with another officer and you know there's two guys at the back door and you hear the word gun, you better drop. Drop. Get to cover, pull your gun if it's not already out. Remember that when you hear that word. And I want you to practice this. As you're watching these videos and have a little bit of space around you like I do, always be ready if somebody says the word gun, drop. Let that bullet go over your head. If they're coming in ready to shoot, you've dropped, you've missed that. When you get into the stunning techniques and striking things, we'll talk about how to come. Once you do that gun, you drop from here. You drop down, your feet are shoulder width apart. You don't have to see all this, you know, not yet till we get to the other. But as you're dropping down, you're going to drop, keep your feet apart with balance. Hand down on the ground like a football player. That keeps you from falling. From here, you can explode upward. So somebody is holding, see arms range like this? You drop your underneath that. You come up and explode up under the ribs, up this way, and up the arms, forcing their gun up in the air. And we're going to get to that in a later video. First, you practice getting out of the way, and then you practice coming up and taking it away. Get it up and make them shoot up in the air in the safest place possible. And then what to do once it's up to that point. How to use elbows and knees and feet. Head buzz. We're going to get to that. How else can you distract somebody mentally and emotionally? We talked about physically. I can talk for hours on this topic, but I want to shorten everything. Just get just get the wheels turning and let you start to think and see this in videos. In this video, I'm going to tell you a story and dedicate this to my, to my best friend down there at the prison, Will. 
We distracted an inmate one day that was very, very abusive and violent to the other officers, smacking the officers. And he would do stuff, pick on officers, bump them like this on purpose, or as he's walking out the door to go to the chow hall, kind of shoulder bump, shoulder check. And he was getting way out of hand. But no, you can't walk up there legally and just hit him and knock him out. Well, you, when opportunity is presented to you, and you're quick on your feet and your thinking and wit. This is what happened. It was a weekend, it was a visitation day. And we were told he had an incident, he was uh, abusive and had yelled at the lieutenant and was sent down to the segregation, down to the tier one at breakfast, which is early. And he's supposed to have visitation with his baby and his baby's mother. They weren't married. And they said, you know, we're going to, he's, he's down there a little bit. We're going to write him dis disciplinary report, et cetera. But make sure he gets to that visitation. She's traveling several hours to get there. So it was busy. We had some other incidents happen. We had had some people putting herself on the door, trying to get out of the dorm. So he was down in that unit. We were waiting and listening for the call. It came about 11 o'clock, visitation time was well underway. No call yet, but we knew that she was coming. And we needed to get him back to the dorm. We finished our task, and we had enough time to do this before count. So we were going to make the move before count. The lieutenant called me and said, hey, you know, we've slowed down. You've got time. Let's get him back to his dorm. He'll be ready down there. Okay, I'll take him down here in about five minutes. We'll finish him. So I get my buddy Will. We go over to the door. Hey, your, uh, your visitor's here. And he's like, okay, let me out so I can go see him. And I said, let me ask you this. Why, why were you yelling at the lieutenant, cussing the lieutenant this morning? Well, uh, they, they don't. I said, okay, the lieutenant's wrong and you're right. Yes. I said, I don't think so. Why are you always hitting officers and bumping officers? Why are you doing this? You're doing this to the new people. You're testing them and playing this game with them. And... He said, oh, it's just misunderstanding. I said, so all these people have come and told me this, and they're lying, and you're telling me the truth. I'm supposed to believe you. And he said, yeah. And I said, okay. I remember. I said, you, your visitor's here. I said, we're going to take you out. Um, because you're not assigned to the tier program, your general population, we'll escort you up, not in handcuffs, because that's how it would be done for a regular, you know, uncuffed. We'll escort you up, take you to visitation. You're going to have the rest of the day to visit with them and have a great time. And he was like, okay. I said, but on the other hand, I said, the other option we could do, and I'm looking at him. I said, I can, um, I can just punch the wall a couple times, get my hand, look all scratched up and everything. And I'll go up to visitation and I'll go tell her, well, we had a, he had a problem. He attacked one of the officers this morning. We, we had a little bit of a fight and now he's locked down and he can't come up. And I'm going to show her my hands, and she's going to think that I'm the one that beat you up. And I'm going to tell her, I'm sorry. He's locked down. You're going to have to turn around and go home. You have to drive those, those four, five, six hours, whatever, home with your baby. Thanks for coming anyhow. He said, you wouldn't do that, would you? So I, you know what I did? A distraction technique. I turned around. I started hitting that wall. Hit my Went the wall good with both hands. Hit the metal door. And I said, look, see my hands? That looked pretty good. See ya. And we turned and we walked out the dorm and we walked into Sally Port, the little area between the two, two locking metal doors. And we stood there and he screamed and he yelled and he cussed at me. We stood there about three minutes and then he started crying. I'm sorry, begging us to let him out. Balance displacement. Did I displace his mental and emotional balance? Yes, I did, because he thought he could treat the officers this way, get away with it, get what he wants, get to go see the woman and the baby, and he won. No, I, I took this away. Did I distract him? Oh, yes, I did, very much. Made a grown man cry. So we turned around, we walked back in and looked at him, I said, uh, it made so-and-so. I said, she's not here yet. I said, I did that to teach you a lesson. I said, we're going to go back to your dorm. And when, and I've already told officers down there, remember I was a sergeant there in that behavior unit. I said, whenever they come, whenever she comes with the baby, 
they're going to get you right up. I've already told them, don't waste any time. You're already dressed and ready. Take them right up. I said, we're just waiting on the phone call, but we're going to move you before count. That way, if, if anything, you need to go to the bathroom, brush your teeth or something, you know, brush your teeth again, you'll be ready to go. He looked at me and he was like, thank you. Tears rolling down his face. And Will's looking at me and I'm looking at Will and we, we kept straight face, you know, doing the good cop, bad cop routine, whatever. We both kept a straight face. We said, hope you learn from this. And we took him back to his dorm. He apologized all the way down there. I said, is this going to happen again? I said, because the next time I will do that, and I'll send her home. I will do that. I said, and, and it won't just be the door and the wall. Because you, you start an altercation one more time with an officer, there will be a fight. That will never happen again. And you know what? It never happened again. Never happened again. One of the good stories, nobody got hurt, but we taught him a lesson using these two things. Did I transfer some energy? Yes, not physically, but I did. Because this inmate was aggressive and hostile, and I turned it around on him. Some reverse psychology. Did I focus? Yes, I did. Because my focus was turning his emotional and mental state from crazed down to normal. I says, look, you're the father of this baby. You've got to learn how to act right. Stop this nonsense, pushing and shoving and bullying. You stop all this. Baby's going to see and repeat and do everything you do. The baby will act like you in visitation. Everything that you're doing, the baby will pick up on and act like this. It was his first baby. Short conversation about, you know, experience being a father to him. Some lessons, you know, don't cuss. No gang signs, you know, watch your mannerisms. Don't let him pick up on his little things. Don't raise your voice to the woman. Let him see this comfortable conversation. That inmate changed after that day. Distraction techniques. Distraction. Do you know how to distract somebody? Remember, we talked about here, seven danger zones. If you're a civilian putting groceries in your car, somebody comes up to the window, has that crazy look on their face right by your baby, how are you going to distract them? Yell and scream. If somebody called 911, help. Basic things. Same thing you do in CPR. Help. Somebody called 911. You got to say stuff like that. How else are you going to distract them? Not the traditional wrestling, throw sand in their eyes. You know, you remember the old Greg Valentine had the fire, throw the fire in the other wrestler's eyes. You don't always have to do that. You can distract them by pulling some mace out and spraying mace or spraying something. You could throw something at them to distract them. Because imagine I'm coming to attack you and I'm moving like this. And all of a sudden you throw. I'm ducking and blocking. See? Knees are bent. I'm bent over at my waist. I'm blocking. Am I balanced? Nope. The one that has the best balance, the longest, remember, is the one that's going to win the altercation. Take them off balance. Get them away from their aggressive posturing like this. Make them move. Take them off balance. Distract them. Here's a good idea. Somebody's about to attack you. You turn, police officer, I'm right here. Point and yell, police, I'm right here. Come help me. Somebody attacking you is not going to say, nah, I'm guessing they're bluffing. They're bluffing. Nah, police, come here. You know, whatever. Joe, I'm right over here. Say a name. Say a name. Say something. I'm right over here. Honey, come out from under the car. He's coming. Say something like that. Verbally communicate. Throw objects at people if you have to. If they're coming in quick and you need to distract, remember, start moving side to side. Be careful. Don't turn your back on them, but turn and make things sideways. And as you're turning and your hands are free, move that marker, my hand's free. You're turning. Drop what's in your hands. If you don't throw it at them, drop it. Make your hands free. You can distract somebody by a quick pow up like that. That's a good, that's a good distraction technique. 101,000 distraction techniques. Think of five or ten of them that are good for you. Think of different scenarios. Think about the weather, the snow on the ground, the ice, the sand. There's a hole in front of you. Somebody's coming to attack you or they're doing something. You say, there's a hole in the ground. You're distracting them. What are they talking about, hole in the ground? Be creative. Your shoes are untied. Your pants are on fire. That dog's about to bite you. There's a car about to hit you. Watch out for that semi. 
See, it goes on and on. But this is what you're doing mentally. You're preparing. Until the threat stops, you're going to distract. Until the threat stops, you're going to transfer and focus energy. See, these all go together. Everything. Build this inside yourself. I wore this on purpose today. Skilled in every position. Why? Because after many, many years and many, many, many fights with people, I know how to fight till the threat stops. I also know when to stop, stand up, or stop and walk away. I know how to shot avoidance. See? Do that in on there? Did you do that? I know how to transfer and focus energy very well. Flip people, cartwheel people, clothesline people, pick them up, toss them. We're going to talk about all those things. I got many things to tell you. I'm the master of balance, displacement, and distraction techniques. I'm the master of stunning techniques, striking techniques. I have knees and elbows like you would not believe. Don't underestimate me at 52 years old. And I, I, I've mentioned before, I've competed many times in strongman and powerlifting. I've done, I think, 16 strongman contests, been to nationals twice. Don't be fooled. Don't underestimate your opponent. I'm also a great, loving, caring, and genuine person that totally enjoys helping people. Why I'm doing this? Because I want to help millions of people protect yourself and be safe. You get off of work and you come home, what do you want to do? Have dinner, relax, see your family. How was your day today, honey? How are the school kids, the things that you normally do? You want to live to get to that point and walk in that door with a smile on your face, unharmed. And ask them, how was your day? And tell them that you love them. That's very important. So you need to spend some time thinking about all these things. You can think about it while you're washing your car, while you're vacuuming the floor. You can help vacuum. You can help do dishes. You can help all these things. All of this put together will make you what other video is called Becoming a Beast. This will help you to get there when you start living all of this. Every time, everywhere I go, sometimes I feel it's a curse. But every second of my life is prepared for fighting and for war. It's all I've done since I've been 18. But it's come in handy because it's kept me alive and protected me for some really bad things. You can become this aware yourself. I use the word aware. Awareness. Become aware of your surroundings. Who's around you? What do you see? What do you smell? We'll have another video later. We'll talk about improving your senses. Going through your house blindfolded. What you need to learn and, and know from the sense of hearing and smell and touch. Not just what you see. Thanks for joining. I know this was a little bit longer than, than a, a shorter video. But everything is very important because this is your life and your family. You have to live. You have to be alive and survive. Thanks again. As always, I enjoy doing this, and I'll see you next time.